We're going to jump right into it, five different things, and we're going to spend most of our time on the first one because it's really the most important, and it's the letter P. What we've got to do is, first of all, we've got to put up a mirror. When anger is triggered and conflict happens, we've got to put up a mirror, and what we've got to really ask ourselves is this question. Why is my anger being triggered by this? Why am I really angry? Put it up a mirror. Uh, you know, the scripture, I mean, not the scripture, there's a saying that says, you know, confession is good for the soul. So if confession is good for the soul, I'm going to be feeling good in a minute or two, all right? Because a couple of years ago, I got so discouraged as a pastor. I'm just going to share that with you. And uh, anyway, I, you know, somehow Facebook knows I'm a pastor. I, I don't have that on my Facebook account, but somehow they figured that out. And so I, I get like all kinds of ads, like about every, seem like every time I'm scrolling, I get all these different ads for all of these things. And you know, that, that uh, this is going to be the thing that really, this is what you need. You, you can't live without this in your church. You can't live without this program and without this ministry. And I mean, that was just starting to eat my lunch. How many ever felt that way? You did, I'm, I was just like, I'm so tired of seeing all of these ads, you know, things like unbreak your church. I'm sorry, my church ain't broken. Hello, it's Christ church anyway. It's not my church, it's his church. I mean, these, these are the thoughts that go through my mind. And so I was feeling so frustrated one day, and you know that Holy Spirit's just faithful, and all of a sudden he starts dealing with me. Have you ever had that happen to you where all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, hey, why are you feeling this way? And I had to put up a mirror, and I had to look a little bit deeper into my life, and I discovered that down inside of me was a lot of frustration and a lot of hurt and a lot of resentment and it really wasn't those little ads that were making me angry it was the way I was responding to those ads because I needed to deal with Bob okay you ever been there okay and I, I'm glad I got that out all right so let me just say this today the scripture tells us that a lot of it has to do with pride in fact I was feeling proud and that was part of my thing that I had to repent of towards Facebook Proverbs 13 10 tells us pride leads to arguments James chapter 4 verse 1 is a really an interesting verse it says do you know where your fights and arguments come from they come from the selfish desires that war within you. And, and what we know is that pride and selfishness, you put those together, how many of you know that is really a case for immaturity? And so when we put up the mirror, what we're saying is this. We're saying, God, would you really help me see what's on the inside? And you see, we have to ask that question because the truth is that anger is not the real issue. How many of you realize that? Anger is not the primary uh, emotion. Anger is the secondary emotion. And what many of us do is we jump over the primary emotion uh, and, and, we, and we live at the anger stage. We live in the secondary emotion. But what we do when we look in the mirror, we, we, we look a little bit deeper and we can see the thing that's causing the anger. And it really boils down to three different things. You may want to jot them down if you're feeling angry. It's probably because of one of these three things, all right? It's because of hurt. It's because of fear. Or it might be because of frustration. And I realized as I was looking at Facebook, it was because of all three. All right? I was hurt because of things that had happened in my life. I was afraid. I didn't want to be a failure in my life. And it made me feel that way reading these things. I was frustrated because I couldn't see everything happen that I wanted to happen. And so, and so we, we got to look deeper when we look into the mirror of our life. And it's kind of like in elementary school. How many of you went to elementary? Yeah, how many of you can't remember going to elementary? Okay. Uh, you, you remember that there's three primary colors, right? What are they? Red, yellow, and blue. All the other colors are made up from those three. And fear, hurt, and frustrations are the primary emotions that many of us don't stop and, and, and try to recognize what, what the, what's happening with that we immediately jump over to anger. And so what we need to do is we need to put up that mirror and say, God, help me see what's really going on beneath the surface. 
Let me give you some scenarios, all right? Let's say you're a single person and you've been dating someone for a while. You've even fallen in love. And, and uh, all of a sudden, the next, you know, yesterday, they told you, for example, they said those famous lines, let's just be friends. And you feel now, you feel angry toward them. Actually, how many of you know the anger is the secondary emotion? The primary emotion is you're feeling rejected and you're feeling hurt. How many of you get what I'm saying? Today you're coming, let me give you another real ex an example. Today you're coming to church and you're the kind of person that wants to be on time. And, and you're with someone that you live with and they're not on time. And so you get in the car and you're thinking, I'm going to make it, it's going to be all right. And you get down to the stoplight and lo and behold, the traffic light is out and you can't believe your eyes. There's a giant traffic jam on Sunday and now you're feeling angry. That, that's the secondary emotion. What's the primary emotion? The primary emotion is that driving your anger is frustration how many of you are seeing that what we've got to do is we've got to take a good look in the mirror amen how many think that's good advice right in fact the scripture tells us we're to look deeply within ourselves did you know that the bible is a self-reflective book how many, it's amazing. Just start underlining the questions, especially in the gospel. How many questions did Jesus ask? He was a master question giver because he wanted people to look inward and think about what was going on on the inside of themselves, right? And so that's what we've got to do. We've got to put up a mirror. All right. All right. And then E, we've got to examine our anger. Examine your anger. How many know anger is real? It is real. And it's not only emotional, it's actually biochemical, which means that there's an actual release of chemicals into your bloodstream. And that tells me that God is the one that created all of this. It's, it's kind of a defense mechanism. It's God's way of protecting us so that we won't feel so vulnerable to the world. Now, I'll have you know that anger in and of itself is not a bad thing. Right? Anger's actually a good thing, you know? But we've got to examine that anger, and we've got to be willing to say, I want to handle my anger in a responsible way. And, uh, and, and uh, we have to ask ourselves the question, where am I headed with this? Where is it headed? Anger's real, but we've got to ask ourselves, is this healthy anger? You know, it's possible to have healthy anger. Sometimes the right response to negative situations in our world is anger, right? When we think of sex trafficking, we, we, ought, to do, we ought to feel angry about that. Hello. When we think of abortion, we ought to feel angry about that. But it's got to be a healthy anger, not a, not, 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 not a hurtful type of anger. Hurtful anger is where we start getting really lit up and triggered and, and uh, you know, we start responding in ways where, you know, we get back with that person. We retaliate. We get even. We, we start, a, we, you know, we're all ready to just assassinate that person's character. We have little snappy sayings and we're ready to go. And then there's the anger that's even beyond that that I want to call a, a, a hateful anger. And God help us that we never enter into that. And that's where it's, you know, it just consumes us and resentment rises up within us all the time and it's constant and we're and we're always living that way so we've got to ask ourselves the question you know what 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 where am I headed with this anger and how many of you know there's different ways to respond to anger let me tell you what if you feel angry I'll tell you what you can how one way you can do to get rid of anger how many like this I'd like to know how to get rid of anger let me tell you what you do you just start working Mow the lawn with your anger. Pull the weeds with your anger. Wash the car. Clean out the closets. Clean out the attic. Fix the plumbing. Clean out the garage. And let me tell you, by the time you're done, you won't be angry anymore. Hello. Work it out. Go to the gym. Pump some iron. Whatever you do, uh, you, 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 can, you can work it out. And did you know that it's possible to drop anger? How many of you know that it's possible to just to drop anger? You can. You say, oh, that's impossible. No, I'm going to tell you it's absolutely possible. I've seen people do it. You can actually be having a big fight with your spouse or with somebody, one of your kids, and everything can be at a, at a high level of tension, and the telephone rings, and what do you do? Yeah, hello. How you doing? Yeah, oh, I'm really good, man. Yeah, I, I'm really handling it well, yeah. Yeah, it's good, yeah. Wait a minute. What happened to all that anger you... You just let it go. If you can do that for a phone call, you can actually do that. 
It's possible just to drop anger. So the next time you get cut off on the freeway and you want to give them the international sign for whatever, let me tell you what you do. Just drop it, okay? Just say, I'm letting this thing go. You'd be surprised. It's possible. This is what Ephesians tells us. It says, don't sin by letting anger gain control over you. And that's what Jesus did, right? He, didn't, he got angry, but his anger was controlled by his spirit. Jesus never allowed the anger to control him. So examine your anger. And then let me give you the third key here today. If you're experiencing anger, frustration, hurt, A, you've got to act slowly, not impulsively. The question you have to ask yourself is, what am I trying to accomplish? And it, 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 will I wound somebody with this anger? How many know it's so easy to say things? Now, I've had the, I don't know whether it's a privilege, but I've had the opportunity, I guess, to eat by myself in a restaurant. How many of you ever done that? Table for one, please. <laughs> oh, don't you have any friends? Oh, i got lots of friends. I'm just here by myself today, okay? Table, you know, so you, you get your table, you're having a cup of coffee, you're having a cup of coffee, and it's not that you intend to listen to people's conversations, but they're talking so loud, you can't help yourself, right? And you're sitting there, and, and, and I know you think this, I know you do. How many of you know people say the stupidest stuff? They've got the most ridiculous opinions. They've got the craziest ideas about life. And so you're sitting there, and I mean, pretty soon they say something that's just so ridiculous, and you want to just turn around and say, I just want to tell you, you have the dumbest opinions of anybody I've ever heard of. I know y'all are way more spiritual than me, all right, but. I've thought of that, but you know what? You've got to, you've got to act slow. You've got to think, who's going to get hurt if I do this? You might hurt that person's feelings, but they might hurt you too. Am I right? You may get cussed out. But here's the truth, right? Words hurt. Words are powerful, and every person in this room has been a recipient of word hurt. Uh, this sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Who came up with that? Come on. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes it's, I'd rather take a stick rather than take some words because a bruise will go away after a while. Hello? But let me tell you, the words stick in your mind, and years later you can think of them and you hear them over and over again. I was reading this week, and, and I discovered one guy, what he does when he feels angry. He goes out to the garage, and he's got a, 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 some boards out there, and he takes a, a bunch of nails, and he'll start hammering those nails into those boards, and, and he'll put the nail in, and I mean, just as angry as he'll put as many nails in there as he needs to, and then when he starts feeling his anger starts to wane, he'll start pulling out the nails, and he'll realize, wow. Look at the damage that all these nails did. And he'll think, this is the damage that my words can do if I just let them fly. How many know that's a pretty good idea right there? You say, well, what if I've got something on the tip of my tongue and I, and, and, and I just want to say it? Let me give you a verse for you today. Proverbs 17, 28, it says this. I love this verse. It says, even fools are thought to be wise when they keep silent. When they keep their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. Hello? Okay. And uh, so, anyway, kind of a humorous verse there. But we've got to learn how to act slow. Can I read you a couple more Proverbs? They're so powerful, so rich. It says this, a fool gives full vent to anger, but a wise person quietly holds it back. Proverbs 13 and verse 16 says, wise people think before they act. Fools don't, and they brag about it. <laughs> Come on, wise people think before they act. Okay, and so then the next letter is the wonderful letter.